Hi everyone. So in this video, we're going to do some just basic factoring um, of trinomials with trial and error. So I broke this down in some other videos, and these are just more examples in case you feel like you need them. So I'm going to do these five examples. And my suggestion is that, um, that you try these on your own. Remember math is not a spectator sport. So try these on your own. The worst that happens, right, is that you get it wrong, which is, you know, no big deal. So let's, let's jump into this. So starting with the first one. So, um, when you have just X squared, like we do here, this is, this is kind of like the nicer type of trinomial, I guess we could say, because, um, what I can do then when I'm factoring this is, so I know that I need to set up the two brackets and I'm going to have an X here and an X here. So that's going to give me my X squared. So the whole idea behind trial and error is what do I multiply to make this? And then what do I multiply to make this? Now, when you have just plain old X squared though, you can take this a step farther and think what two things multiply to make this that would add to this number. So as I'm thinking through my pairs, so for 36, so 36 I know is nine or four times nine and four plus nine is 13. So I know that that's going to work in this case. And I've talked about in other videos, like you really want to just do a quick sanity check of this. So I've got X times X, which is X squared. So maybe I'll just write it out right here. X squared. I've got four X, nine X, and then 36 X. So that will definitely give me what I needed. So this was a successful trial and error. So we'll keep going. Okay, so now I've got x squared minus 9x minus 36. So as long as I have x squared here, it's still the same idea. So I can still think first terms here are going to be x and x. And then what two things will multiply to negative 36 that will add to negative 9? And so you can, again, you can just kind of like play around with this, right? So let's see, negative 36. Um, well, that would still be negative four and nine, but in this case, right, negative four plus nine is not going to give me what I need. So that's going to give me five. So that's the wrong choice. So now we need to think of some other things that would multiply to this. Um, I think of 12. So let's see, what if I did negative 12 and three? So negative 12 plus three. Oh, yep. That'll add to negative nine. So I know that that's the right one. So. I can put this in as negative 12, positive three. And so then I can just do a quick check. X times X gives me the X squared. Negative 12 X plus three X gives me negative nine X. And then negative 12 times three is negative 36. Now I notice that when, once negative signs come into the problem, this is kind of where people make mistakes. So if you put a positive 12 here and a negative three here, just notice that would not give you the right term. So if you're prone to that error, because everybody's prone to errors, right? Like, so if your particular type of error is that you just choose the wrong signs, make yourself multiply this back out just to double check. No shame in, in doing that, right? Okay. So at this point, I really would encourage you to maybe like pause the video and try this on your own because math is not a spectator sport and you'll get more out of this if you try it on your own. Two things that multiply to 24, but add to negative 11. So in this case, so I've still got the X squared, so this will be X and X. So two things that um, multiply to negative 20 or that multiply to positive 24 would add to a negative 11, I can't speak, would be negative eight and negative three. Negative eight times negative three gives me 24 and then negative eight X minus three X will give me the negative 11 X. So bada bing, bada boom, we're good. Okay, so now let's pivot to the kind of harder problems for trial and error. So this is where I want to remind you that the whole essence of trial and error is literally to focus on the first and last term. That is a simplified process in case you get a little overwhelmed. So I no longer have X squared. So that whole trick of what two things multiply to this, but would add to this won't work because this is now we've got this two X squared. So that trick kind of goes to the wayside. So you really want to simplify this for a second. What two things will multiply to make two X squared? Well, you'll need two X and X. So two X times X will give you two X squared. And then the other thing that you're going to want to do is you, you, so you want to try not to have like too much mental drama over this, I guess. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to just throw something down that will make negative three. And there's only one way to make negative three, right? So one thing has to be positive, one has to be negative, but it's three and one. So let's do three and one. 
Okay, so let's let's troubleshoot this now, or let's let's see how we did. So if I multiply this back together, I get two x squared, three x minus two x, and then minus three. So I can see that this did not work out. So the whole thing with trial and error is you want to make smarter guesses. So the problem here is that this middle factor is too low, right? So why is it too low? It's because when I bounced this number off of the two x, like the like the these. So these two things are being off of bounced off of these two higher things. I need to set up the multiplication in such a way so that I get bigger numbers. So the way to do that would be to have the 2x bounce off of a bigger number here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the 3 and the 1. Okay, so this is why it's called trial and error. Sometimes you just make a guess and it doesn't work and that's no problem. So I need to get negative three. This still gives me negative three, right? So I've got negative one and three, so it still gives me negative three, so we're all good there. And so let's try it again. So I've got two x squared, six x minus one x minus three. And again, we miss. Okay. So this is where now we actually need to think about this for a second, because this one's, I, I threw this one in to make it a little bit of a challenge. So um, this is actually like the largest number that we can make, this 5x, right? Because let's think about this for a second. For three, there's only two numbers you can multiply to get to three, right? It's one and it's three. And I have now made this so that the two and the three bounce off of one another to get the largest number possible. And I still didn't get to the seven X because one of these numbers ultimately has to be negative, right? So if this were a positive three, we would have gotten the seven X. But, but now in just, if this has to be a negative number, one of these two things has to be negative, right? I have made myself the largest positive number, six X. There's no other way for me to write this. And I'm explaining all of that to you because the answer here is that this is actually prime. And this analysis that I just did is exactly what you're going to have to do. Um, because sometimes you might be driving yourself crazy. And the reason is <laughs> it can't actually be factored. And so you really have to understand like what is going on with the multiplication. But now I know, right? So I've made the largest number that I can. The, like this is a two is prime and three is prime. So there's only two ways to make those, right? So there's two X times X. That's the only way you're going to get two X squared. And one and three are the only ways you're going to get three. So this two X times this three, this is the largest number I'm going to get. And then I have to subtract off the one X since this is a negative three. So this is what it is. So it can't be done. So it's prime. Okay. Finally, um, let's do this last one. So this one will have an answer. Um, so I strongly recommend that you pause here, give it a try. You might have to give it several tries, but that frustration is part of the learning process. So give it a try. Worst that happens is you get it wrong. If you get it wrong, try it again. Hit play when you're ready. Okay. So I didn't work this one out in advance. So I'm literally just going to kind of go through my thought process when I, when I do something like this. Okay. So now I need to make six X. And so what makes this problem a little intimidating is that there's more than one way to make six X squared, right? So I don't know, I'm just going to make a guess because it's trial and error and you make a guess and then you kind of evaluate it and then you go from there. So two X and three X will give me six X squared. I'm just going to try it and see what happens. Okay. Um, so next, so now I've got negative 20. So there's a lot of different ways to make 20, right? Or negative 20, but I'm going to need a positive and a negative in that. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Let's just do, how about plus five minus four. So five times negative four will give me negative 20. Will that get me the, ne the middle term that I need? Well, let's see. So I multiply this back together. I get six X squared, 15 X minus eight X and then minus 20. So that gives me six X squared plus seven X minus 20. Okay. So the whole idea with this is that you try something and then you evaluate it. So I don't want to have all this mental drama of like, Oh, I have to make the perfect first choice. It's called trial and error. Cause you, you might make an error, but now that I've got this, I need to just think about like, okay, where do I go from here? So <clears throat> it wouldn't make sense for me to like switch the five and the four, right? Um, because one of them has to be positive. One of them has to be negative. The problem here is that this is way too low 
And if I were to flip the five and the four, this is still gonna be too low um, because I've got 15X and, and 8X. So flipping those two things is, is still gonna kind of keep me with lower numbers. So I need to make a more educated guess. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to rewrite this as 6X and X. And then why don't we do, uh, let's try this again. Let's try plus four minus five. So I'll just mix those up. Okay, so let's see what happens if I do that. So if I do this again, I get six X squared, 24 X minus five X minus 20. And so check that out. I have six X squared, 19 X, and then minus 20. So the reasoning here is that by splitting up the two and the three, I just wasn't getting like a good high number to get me to this 19 X. So if I flip my five and my four, I, it's still like th these two numbers, this two and this three, they're just too low. So that told me that probably like I, I needed to have higher numbers in this. So I switched this to six X and six, and I just took another guess just to see what would happen. And I got lucky this time. So you kind of want to look at like, what is your middle result? And what is it that you need to have happen? This was so low that this told me maybe my two and my, th my three were not the best choices. So try it again. Six X can also be six X squared can also be made with six X and X. So I tried those and then I got lucky with that. And that's the type of troubleshooting that you want to do. The more that you practice this, the better you get with making your guesses. But the really essential part is kind of analyzing what went wrong so that you can make the right guess. Okay. So, um, I know sometimes it's frustrating, so I just wanted to kind of throw that out there because sometimes people, you know, when you get something that looks like this, you, you kind of like want to throw in the towel, but don't throw in the towel. It's totally normal. Um, it, it is like a harder thing to factor and it's frustrating because it's just, you know, you make a guess, um, but make better guesses and just try to think about it. And if you're struggling with it, you know, you can always reach out. Okay. So that's going to be the end of that video. Hopefully that was helpful. If it was, please consider hitting the like button and I will talk to you guys next time.